Let's say you want to change. change. Yes. All right, guys, we got 1.30. Let's go ahead and officially kick the meeting off. Call it to order at 1.30.24. Welcome, everybody, to the Public Works Facility Subcommittee. Uh, we're going to do a quick little roll call. It looks like we have everybody listed here. Thank you for showing up. We'll move into B, public comments. Any person wishing to speak to the Council Subcommittee on any item not listed on the agenda may do so at this time. Pursuant to the Brown Act, the Subcommittee is not allowed to consider issues or take action on any item not listed on the agenda. Three minutes are typically allotted for each speaker. We have a public comment. Question. Um, I live just above the uh, Aspen Road development. Yep. And right now I'm getting zest on my cars all the time. How do I deal with that? Where they're building a the new apartment building? Yeah, they're not, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not suppressing the dust enough with the, with the water treatment. Could I get the I'll let them know. Out. I'll let them know. Thank you. Well, what was your name for the record? Oh, excuse me. Richard St. Angelo, 218, Drive Oak Drive, Cove Hill County. <laughs> and also, thanks, Mike. If, if you are going to do public comments, please state your name real quick and then so we can know who you are to get it on the record. Uh, state? Yeah. State, uh, 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 state Christensen, uh, member of the public, resident of Cloverdale. Um, I have some comments about the, the traffic safety. Um, I am. Um, it's pretty easy to uh, follow the traffic rules around here in town, um, but I find that uh, just by my simple observations, um, a lot of people do, a lot of people try, but there are a certain amount of people who are just reckless out there. And um, how can I say that? Well, me, I'm six foot three, I weigh 240 pounds, I've been run over almost three times this year walking in public more pedestrian intersections. Even one car is like three, two feet away. Mm -hmm. On the phone, it's not paying attention. That's very concerning to me. I also did an exercise with a friend where we three nights in a row checked uh, the speed for vehicles going out here on the boulevard. And we found that at least 20 vehicles uh, between seven and nine in the evening were securely way past the speed limit. And one of the last exercises I did uh, four some Sundays ago. I want to take a long walk, so I walked all over um, the first street bridge on the river road. I walked all the way down to uh, Summer Street Summer Bridge. On the way, I found there were lots of cans lying on the, on the side. I had a bag with I picked them up. I had about 150 cans, and guess what? They were mostly beer cans. So I'm really worried that people driving over there, bringing the beer, tossing the can out, and coming in here being slightly long, long can. Right. Thank you, sir. Any other public comment? Are you involved at all as far as... Um, Could you please state your name? Yeah, Screechville, 313 West 2nd Street. With um, the new wells that they talk about putting in, is this committee, is this the right committee? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, the only thing I have to say is that my experience with wells that you're going to put in, when I work with the water district, we had two wells that are doing the same thing that yours are. And what we did is we invited Dr. Einstein from Cal to come talk to us about gravel movement, about where to build a well, and, and how to fix the wells that we already had. It was a very interesting experience. We spent probably two hours with him and learned a lot. Because of that, we had two wells that we built in the 70s that are still good today. We built Wooler Dam, which gave the access to the aquifer that had been compromised. Um, There's a lot of things that we learned. It seems to me like there's a lot to learn here. The, um, <clears throat> the driller that drilled your last wills, because I worked in water, I went down and talked to him a number of times. And he said, why did you dig a well here? And I said, I don't know. The he said, said because he said it won't last, you'll have air in it. Because it's, it's all serpentine on this side. 
he went down in a little bit of aquifer that you have, which is not much, and that he had in the drill into the shale. And his settling pond was covered with oil, which is typical. But it's just thrown out there to think about. If you look at the well logs when they did the bridge, you'll find there's lots of aquifer. Thank you. Yeah. We also, in order to ruin that well, you over pump it. And that was one of the things that Dr. Einstein talked about. It's the movement that you've got to learn how much you can pump before you, you, you can't back charge the well. You know, you, you can't make it good again. So you, it's money wasted to try and refurbish an old well. And, and Vice Mayor Chair, if I can just um, indicate that uh, uh, item 12 on the, on, the, on the standing agenda, we, we are going to provide an update on the citywide drop relief water system project implementation. Um, included as part of that project is uh, a well replacement and rehabilitation. And uh, I, I, our city engineer has been working diligently along with our public works director on that project. And um, what we can talk about it because it is agenda. So I just mm -hmm. want to mention that. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you want to take it now, we can certainly do that. Yeah, I'd say we just take it now. Let's just go ahead and take that item out of the standing items and just discuss it now. Yeah, and we learned a lot from Dr. Einstein. Okay, um, okay. so uh, just for the, the, the members of, uh, the, uh, of the, the community that are here today, uh, the, the city obtained a grant from the Department of Water Resources uh, in, included in that grant is funding for uh, various improvements to our water system. It includes funding for replacement of all the uh, water meters within the city. Uh, we are now nearly uh, in excess of 95% complete with, with what we call the, the smart meter project. Uh, there's some, some final uh, components that you can do with it, 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 your pleasure, Chair, we can talk more about. Um, but just moving forward with the other elements of the project, I think that this gentleman is referring to is uh, we have we have a, a well replacement and well rehabilitation project, which is well three and well seven. Uh, that that work is under contract with uh, West Yost Associates. They're overseeing that. Uh, as uh, the public comment are made, that they're, they're, those wells uh, are are aged. Uh, the infrastructure. Serving them as, uh, as they, they, they've met their uh, their their uh, life, uh, and they are in need of either rehabilitation or replacement. I think at this stage, the it's been determined that the well slated for rehabilitation, uh, it's more cost effective to to just replace it with a new well. So that means new new drilling, uh, in, in a new location, just putting in new infrastructure rather than retrofitting the existing well. Uh, and we were already planning to uh, replace, I think it's well seven. Uh, so the, the intent is to, uh, with the funding, um, and it may involve contribution of, of funds from the water enterprise to complete the project in its entirety, uh, to basically have two, two new wells. Uh, it's part of that work, I think there are, uh, the, the firm, I think, that historically did the work, I believe, was uh, it may have been Borges and Mahoney, or it was in a uh, 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 that did the well logs. It's been uh, quite a long time since that work has been performed, but I'm not sure that the underlying geology has changed much. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I know we are utilizing their expertise to help with the, the two well projects. I'll kind of turn it over to our city engineers if there's anything. At this point, any addition that you'd like to add in terms of an update on the on the well project? Uh, just a minor correction. It's well seven and eight. Well seven and eight. Yes, are the project. Uh, we are finding. I think you mentioned well three because we're finding that well three is also distressed, um, and so you know we'll be bringing that forward when we present the findings here. Um, we do hear what you're saying. The layer, the aquifer layer, is very. Yeah. Thin, that's a good word. Right. Um, it is not. It, it, it's, it is very thin. It's, it's a bad location. Yeah. The, well, the city's limited to the current well field. 
we believe that we have a certain area uh, where we pull resources from the river. Uh, we are looking kind of in long-term planning at areas across the river. We're just not there yet. The infrastructure is not in yet. Uh, the development hasn't. Um, in other words, we'll waste the money again. Well, we're we're going into retrofit and rehab and and replace the existing well seven and eight with grant funding. Uh, I don't see it as a waste. We are looking to address the air entrainment issues. Um, and but that's optimize. what you had the last time. That's what we had the last time, and it's just reoccurred again. I think it's been reoccurring. I'm not. I'm not aware that that has ever not been a problem. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. we are looking at the current project to address yeah. the air entrainment yeah. issues. Yeah. When you over pump, that's what happens. Sure. Yeah. Had you considered the end of the bridge on on the for the aquifer six feet or eighty feet deep? The, the, the east end of the bridge. You've got a new bridge. You're gonna. There pipe. is. Yes. We. So we are aware that there is potentially a better water source there. Right. The city does not have the resources to cross the bridge at this time. That's not city on the property. Right. Yeah, it's it, it's not it's not here right now. The timing is yeah. not here yet. But we're it's aware that that's waste. we yeah. are aware that that is a potential good resource. We're looking at it in the long term planning. Yeah. We're it's just not there yet. With all that money, you surely can use some of it to do it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much money. I mean, we're talking millions of dollars to you and I, that is definitely a lot yeah. of money. You know, it's, it's just not enough money to be able to get across there, uh, do the assessments, purchase the property, get all the environmental clearances. Yeah, it's city property right at the end of the bridge, right? And the <laughs> county property, the bridge is in the county right away. You have lots of room to build a well. We're, we're just not there yet. That's too bad. It's a waste of money. It really is. The aquifer is so thin. I, I hear what you're saying. I agree yeah, with you there, but I, I think we're moving forward with a meaningful project that is going to address the air entrainment issues and optimize our resource that we have right now. Yeah. And Chair, and, and, and maybe maybe what we could do, we can follow up with the resident. Uh, obviously, he has access to uh, some professional resources that you know, we can certainly have a conversation with. Uh, you know, the, the scope of the project it was defined by the grant funding in this case. Uh, with that said, you know, there, there is when those wells were built, our water use was significantly exceeded what it does today as a conservation. Um, uh, but it, it would, you know, there, there was always an anticipation that in addition to the existing wells, which were replacing seven and eight, uh, that we would at some point construct a new well, and that's where a more detailed feasibility study would be necessary in terms of uh, its location, the hydrogeologic features that would support long-term uh, you know, mm -hmm. use of, 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 of uh, aquifer resources, uh, but also the cost to uh, extend the infrastructure to that site and, and, and or whether it's going to require uh, property acquisition to support that. Like Nestle was saying, we're not to that. We're not at yeah. that level yeah. just yet. Yeah, it's a shame. But, uh, yeah. Councilor Walter, did you have something to say? Yeah, thank okay. you, um, uh, Vanessa, uh, Kevin. Any idea of what the cost? Oh, okay. um, uh, I'd like to hear how much it costs us to, to drill a new well, and uh, approximately the cost. And I know a lot of it has to do with uh, how badly damaged the current pumps are. But can you give us a feel for the difference between new? And used, and then I want to come back and talk about the inside of that river, because I know Ken and I have talked about that for quite a while, along with keeping the um, flow of the river in the middle of the river and not letting it meander. Um, so, but could you start with the costs, ballpark? So, so ballpark costs we're looking at for well seven and eight replacement, one point eight million is is the construction cost that we're looking at. Um, so, you know, you split that into, and you get a per well basis. Right. That is a very rough cost. Um, I hope I'm not the low bidder in that estimate. Um, we, you know, we, we would kind of put that out as the engineer's estimate and hope that bids come in a little bit lower than that, but that's what we expect the range to be. And I know that we, uh, uh when, um, we renovated the First Street Bridge and did that uh, walkway on it just now. We made sure that underneath that bridge, 
was hanging a water pipe so that we, when we do tap on the east side, we've already got the pipe in, and we just have to pick it up from the west side down to the plant. Is that still in effect? It, it's my understanding that there is, it is an existing chase in the bridge okay. uh, that can hold pipes. The size of pipes, well, I don't know. I can't, I can't speak to that. Um, okay. Go ahead. And so that's it that you know whether if, if you know we need a ginormous water pipe coming across the bridge we would have to put extra provisions in there but we, we could probably accommodate you know about an eight inch water pipe or so would be my guess well i also remember that um if i'm not mistaken and I, i'd like to have it brought back at the next uh, subcommittee meeting this question as far as how much land do we own on that east side because I could remember when we would allow the gravel company to go into the river, scoop out all the gravel, get, a, get rid of the islands in the middle, and the, the flow of the river was in the middle, and our wells weren't as drastically affected as they are now because it's swinging all the way over to the east side. So I, I'd like to know that as well. And <clears throat> I know Supervisor Boy had talked at one point about bringing dredging back into the river. So I'm not sure where that is on his desk as well. Well, can I talk a minute? Sure. Can. Um, I guess 30 years ago, the river was on this side. And and the talent now of the stream is on the other side, considerably lower than it was on this side. So we didn't have a problem. Of course, we didn't have the population, but to, to keep the river on this side, of course, is a, is a maintenance problem. Um, your aquifer is probably half of what it was 30 years ago because the river has downgraded and it's on the other side. And so it's much lower. So you've probably lost at least, what, 10 feet maybe of aquifer that you had 30 years ago, which you're not gonna get back unless, unless like you say, you run the river over here and the thalwig is now a little bit higher. It's, it's a big job to keep the river where it wants to be. Well, I, you know, I, I part of me agrees with you, Ken, I hate throwing good money after bad. And yeah. we've done this before and we're back in the same situation. And yeah. I, I would just like to know how much of that land on the east side and let's start exploring yeah. other locations for our wells because and, and we may not sink them for another 10, 15 years, but at least we have the location. So. Yeah, the county should have a wide right away there. Yeah, if you could do a summer diversion channel, that would augment the side of the river tremendously. But you need a, you need a hydraulic engineer. You need somebody that understands that. And I don't think the well owners are people that understand that. That's the reason we, had Dr. Einstein come in and talk to us because that's what his expertise was. Well, that was all I had in the Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Yeah. We you. hear you. I mean, like, like our professional engineer, Vanessa said here, we're just not to that point. We yeah. do need to explore over there, east yeah. side. It's in the future. Right yeah. now, the concentration is to get the seven and eight taken yeah. care of and get them. But a, summer, but a summer channel would, would solve a lot of that problem. Okay. I think for you, your wells may be good if you haven't overpumped them with a summer channel. And I'd still like to know how far over we are. Right. And I know we did this study on that 10 years or so ago when we um, were engaged with the county on our water rights. I've added that to uh, future agenda <laughs> items. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. We can definitely give a report. Or currently, we 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 have our parcel that that uh, serves our water treatment plant does a portion of which extends over to Levy Road, but uh, all of the intervening property uh, between our property and Crocker Road or First Street Bridge is all private property, including the properties on both the north and south side of the bridge and including the river channel it's owned by Vulcan lands uh both uh, upstream and uh, downstream of, of the bridge so 
again, um, not that it's not doable. Uh, it just requires us to coordinate with uh, the existing property owners uh, with respect to you know, e either acquiring property, evaluating its potential for uh, you know, serving as a, as a future well site, um, and, and or you know even co-locating uh, infrastructure for a well that's located on our property uh, through their property. So there's there's this. I, I think it's a it's a, a much larger scope than what we are currently entertaining with respect to the grant funding we got from DWR, which was really kind of. I look at it or view it as kind of almost like a maintenance project in the sense that the the well infrastructure is aged uh, and is in need of replacement. So, uh, but 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 doing that is is also redrilling those existing wells. So the intent isn't necessarily to uh, expand capacity, though uh, that's that's something we're always mindful of if we can improve our ability to to pump existing resources from 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 our wells. Thank you, Kim. Indeed. Thank you. All right. Any other public comment? Anyone? All right. Let's move down to C communications. I see we have no written communications. Um, and then uh, D approval of minutes. We have a motion for approval of the July 23rd, 2024. Um, I'll move Second. All right. Mike, did you get that? Yes. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> All right, and then we roll right into, let's get into new business. E, discussion is the stop sign, North Jefferson and West Coast Street, is item number one. Uh, thank you, Chair. We have a, a letter of correspondence we received from uh, Kim Kistropherson, uh, address 108 North Jefferson Street, uh, requesting a, the addition of a stop sign, well, basically to, um, Make that existing intersection a four-way stop. Currently, it's a, a two-way stop. Uh, the the reference uh, in the the correspondence uh, references that uh, this intersection is used by uh, school children attending Washington Elementary School, as well as uh, pedestrians and of course vehicles. Um, and there's also indication that the right turn from First Street. Is uh, what's referred to here in this letter of uh, a blind curve due to due to foliage. Uh, that's an issue that we we might be able to resolve uh, by looking at it and uh, evaluating you know whether uh, foliage removal can be uh, undertaken at that location in, in cooperation with the property owners. But otherwise, the request is to uh, at, make the existing two way stop a four way stop. Do we have that on the? We have a um, map of that. Mike, is it possible to bring up uh, Google Maps? Again, it's First Street in uh, Jeff Jeff Jefferson. Yeah, we have to work with here. Up to find when you're on the spot. Oh, there go now. Gotcha. Now, where's the foliage that we're talking about here? That far right there. Yeah. As you come down First Street and cross commercial, right. you're going west. There's no stop sign. Right. East west. Right. And then you come back on the Jefferson there is. And then on Washington there is. Mm -hmm. And then Jefferson there is not. I mean, the foliage to me seems like that, that's pretty easy to address right there. Now, is that city property right there? That no, would that be on the city's private? So we would have to work with the with the folks that own that property. We do uh, obviously can maintain the right of way, so right. we can cut back uh, vegetation to the back walk. Um, but otherwise, it would be the 
property owner's responsibility to trim any vegetation beyond that, which okay. we, I think we have the authority to enforce our vision triangle. Um, Vanessa, I have to check the mini code, but we could certainly send out a letter. Yes, uh, my name is Christian Foley. I live on North Jefferson there at 120. Mm -hmm. um, just a, a point as well, there's typically cars parked along like both sides of that, mm -hmm. um, that street. So potentially like foliage clearance alone would still provide a, a really clear and visible um, viewpoint from either direction there. If something I would certainly care about. Okay. Yes, yeah, so go ahead, sir. Also on the, um, not on that corner, it's on the left hand, but on the, on the right hand side here. Okay. If, 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 if you pan onto that, there is property owner um, foliage. And then as well, they have in that corner house to the right hand side, like Kenny over here. Right. The people that live there have like um, four vehicles. And so they tend to park not only in their driveway, which is Cool, copacetic. Okay. But they tend to park, well, like where you see that one car, I don't know if it's parked or driving, like that orange truck. Okay. And they park up in there. I know a couple of weeks ago on a Sunday morning when I was out walking my dog and I was making a curve from Jefferson going left onto First Street on the corner. And a kid came flying down. There was a lady, well, there was a lady who was on Jefferson, ready to do a, a right turn. And she, because of the vehicle, that corner I just described, and the foliage, she had to basically roll her car up to where her front end of her car was projecting over the crosswalk, which obviously is not recommended. Mm -hmm. And this kid came flying, well, I mean, I'm 71 years old, I don't know if he was a young kid, but younger than me, he came flying off of Franklin, came flying down first street. He was going probably 40, 40, 45. And he hung that corner. Luckily, the lady, because she was so far out in the intersection, saw him coming and was had enough foresight to throw the car in reverse and back up. Or there would have been, we would have had a, uh, a serious collision. And so I agree with him that it's not just the foliage, but cars parking on the first corner we talked about where this gentleman here said we could cut the foliage back. The people that live in that house have, well, it's between the mother and the father who both have cars and they have two, two children who have cars and they all park along there too. Mm -hmm. So it's really, I mean, it, I mean I, I'll tell you seriously, I won't walk with or without my dog. I guess my places. suggestion is, is that if we say we put a stop sign up tomorrow, is that going to fix the problem of all the cars being parked there and the view and the accessibility well, for people to see? It, it, I think it would. You think yeah. it would? Yeah. I think it now, would. Now, is that the, the next thing? Is that one of the ones where a lot of kids want to go to school in the morning? Is there a lot when of they're walking along with their smartphones and they're okay. jacking with their texting? And I mean, I see it because I have, you probably have all seen me walking around with my dog. And, you know, I see them. I mean, I just, that's why I went to this extent because I really don't want to see some kid seriously injured or DOA. Yeah. It's an ugly sight. I've seen it in my life. And Great. human bodies don't run it right against cars going 40, 45 miles an hour. It's just going to happen. You know? Yes, ma'am. Hey, Chelsea Woodward from Jefferson as well. Um, I definitely understand um, the tree trimming, the, the vegetation control will definitely be helpful as far as an investment from city dollars fixing the problem. We already do have ADA on there. There's already this um, sidewalk stripping for crosswalks. Um, so as far as overall investment from the city, I know dollars are tight, um, would be two stop signs that would definitely prevent and protect our um, pedestrians and our citizens a lot more than we currently So add the two and make it a point. Add it, because it 
they're driving from the one school towards the other, yeah. and there's a lot of people swinging that intersection real fast. Gotcha. Oh, uh, yeah. And it can be really in the mornings, it can be really busy. And we're lucky that nothing tragic has happened, but I think that this would be a valuable investment in that. Yeah, they. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm Elizabeth Smith, and I've been driving the shuttle ever since before it became Sonoma. Mm -hmm. It's always been a problem. It's the parents coming down off of Franklin, and it's the traffic flow, not the trees or the trucks on there. The people come flying around the corner, they go right in front of the bus. Mm -hmm. And they got the stop sign right next, uh, the bus stop right next to the stop sign, which is dangerous for the children because the parents that are going down to Jefferson are not thinking about anybody else's kids. All they're in, uh, uh, just like bats out of hell going to Jefferson School. <clears throat> and, and I mean, Sometimes our bus waits five minutes to to get around, and then sometimes we have to stop because someone comes flying down and overtakes there. What Thank they you. need to do is put the four-way stop in so to slow the traffic down so the kids do have a chance to get across. And then they need to train, put the bus stop over on First Street instead of um, Jefferson, so the kids don't have to block all the parents coming in to go down to Jefferson School. That could be a future moving the bus stop. We'll look at future agenda item on that possibly. I want to stick with the stop sign on this one because that's yeah, on but, the agenda. But uh, before we get too out in the weeds and start redesigning all the streets, I get that, but thank you. Um, I know we do, everybody in this room knows we have a speeding problem <laughs> and we have people blowing stop signs. I get that. It's in every single neighborhood around here. The one thing we have done, we have the uh, Cloverdale Police Department does have their um, their trailer that they put out. It had, believe it or not, it has a dramatic effect on people slowing down. But like Derek, what do you think on, on the stop sign safety wise? I'm leaning towards safety for the kids myself. That's oh, yeah. why I'm always yeah. gonna lean. But then, but for the safety the the of the kids, kids you have to slow the traffic right. flow. Agreed. Agreed. I'm leaning towards safety of the kids. Does anybody else have any comments on the stop sign? Now, the other thing I'm kind of worried about is we've had some stop sign, and they're all great stop sign requests and where we put them. I just want to make sure that you can actually, you know, move through Cloverdale where there's not a stop sign on every single, you know what I mean? And, and then... Then we turn around, we have the opposite of this at the next meeting, and you have too many stop signs, and why can't people get through town? That's what I'm trying to balance here. But safety-wise for the kids, and if I know there's a lot of kids that go there, um, I'm leaning towards making that a four-way stop. That's my suggestion. What would, I mean, I want to get some input from you folks. Uh, yeah, that's ultimately your guys to suggest, and I think that little section between Franklin and mm -hmm. Uh, Jefferson, probably, we could probably apply center line markings on that because there's no center line markings now just because people kind of come through those turns wide. Mm -hmm. um, kind of enforcement of the Assembly Bill 413, which uh, puts red curves on, on the both corners, offsets vehicles 20 feet. We can, we can implement some of that at that intersection. I think that would alleviate the, uh, the, the vehicles parked there uh, and vegetation management. Uh, I would say maybe we go with that route, and then uh, if the stop sign is still needed, we go that way, or or we can just do all of that. But definitely the center line marking because getting people in that kind of that short Franklin area, they kind of turn it into an S turn, and yeah, you they drift into that other lane. So so uh, identifying those. Uh, the, the east and the westbound lanes in that section. And then we did put school lane markings. We did double them up and we actually moved them uh, west from where they were before and put a second one. Um, we can also uh, put another one in that little section. There. Yes. My thought would be 
that's a good idea what you have there. But my thought is, is that if there's four way stops there, well, unless they just totally ignore the stop sign, which there's not much we can do here in this room about that. That's an attitude with somewhere else, somebody else has to deal with. But but, but at least with the stop sign, they're gonna stop before they make the turn onto Jefferson, you know. Either way, they're gonna have to stop. So when they come off that stop sign, unless they've got a double A fueler dragster there that they can crank off the line, they're not gonna build up a lot of speed. Yeah. While they come around the corner and get a lot of the problems I second street. I think a lot of the problem is the transition from Franklin to first. It's yeah, because they get flying down that stretch of, between Franklin and yeah, and then yeah. they just don't they don't have no reason that they have no reason to slow down when they make the curve. That's what almost happened the other day that I saw a new kid with what we said, Miss Jim. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I think high school, the high school kids. You know, yeah. excuse me, Ken. Was that Councilmember Walter? I, you know, I have to agree. I, I, I think a stop sign there would, would go a long way, and I'd like to see us do that. Um, I also would like the center line in the Monkeys so that we get more on that corner on Franklin. They know where their side of the road is. My question to staff is, and, and Vanessa, I guess, um, as long as it meets all the standards, we don't have to have a study for that. No, I don't. I don't think so. It would be good. I think Derek's good about putting you know change conditions ahead and okay, maybe yeah. some you know advanced warning about a month in advance if there's a new sign there. Well, I, I'd like to see us go ahead with both of those and I, features. And, and at, at, at the next police uh, administration subcommittee, I, I really want to talk about that uh, radar uh, trailer that we have. I mean, it has the capability. We're taking pictures and grabbing license plates and numbers so that we can issue tickets. I think we need to clip that off for a little bit. I mean, it's getting, you know, it's getting ridiculous. It's getting to the point where, and, and that intersection specifically, but realistically, all over town. I mean, there's a lot of people are ripping through town, you know, and they're just at, the, at this point. I mean, you see habitual offenders doing it, and there's just nobody saying anything or doing anything. So, what council member Walter saying, I agree. Let's get some accountability going on these guys, you know. Yeah. Can, we get, can we get a timetable for those stop signs and stickers? When, when will they be in there? Like, do we we need to run this through council, correct? For the sign, we, normally we bring these. I'd like to bring these council, yeah. I'd like to bring move that forward to council and, and just get their take on it too, and then and then bring it up the next okay. meeting for two frames. So, uh, agenda item for council with visual frame, yeah. Now, do we have uh, stop signs down at the courtyard? Uh, yeah, we should have to. And do we have those uh, center line markings? Yeah, we'll put that down in the It's such a short segment. Yeah, right. plus the 200 days. Because as soon as council approves it, I will see get it done. We're coming into the rainy season. The kids are going to be walking in the rain, not paying attention. Yeah, I would say this the stop sign is okay. the council thing. I, I think we can we can implement the uh, center line marking uh, just as a uh, kind of a part of our marketing strategy program. So, and, and really, just for the the record, um, and, and again, this is this is according to national traffic safety data that uh, stop signs are not effective at controlling traffic speeding. Um, I just want to say that. Yeah. With that said, yeah. there's enough information today to point to why a traffic uh, a stop sign would be valuable, uh, particularly with respect to assigning right of way, particularly for pedestrians. And I think that's where it's valuable because uh, cars will have to stop and take note of pedestrians that may need to move the crosswalk. So, from a safety perspective, I, I just want to be cautious because it. it, it we, we, we see it, we've done, we've added a lot of stop signs in this town, but that we haven't seen a corresponding drop in speeding. Right. And, 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 and again, based on national traffic safety data, and this is reflected and was referred to as the MUTC manual, it's a manual that guides all the traffic engineering done across the United States, reflects that they, they, they don't really affect speeding. Um, uh, unfortunately, you mm -hmm. think they would, uh, it, it often, and in some cases, has an opposite effect. Uh, the most thing I've, the thing that I've seen most effective is that trade. I mean, realistically, yeah. you know, you see it, and oddly enough, it tells you. Yeah, <laughs> people are like, they see those lights blink, and boom, they come right down. So, you know, 
don't know. It's just but but being in the close proximity there to the, to the kids and, and, and the crosswalk. That's what gets me nervous right there. I do not want to see that happen. You know? Yeah. I think the additional oh, sorry, no. item of the red curbing as with legislation allows now is to keep the parked cars back from the intersection. That's the key. Right? At least for safety sake, the speeders can then at least see somebody crossing the intersection. Right. Mm -hmm. oh. And the media too. Yeah. 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 Yep. I do yeah. know, I can't remember who suggested that the, the speed, the LED speed wagon, you know, thing. But I, I from what I, I did some research, uh, Unless I'm mistaken, I think the state out of Sacramento said that you can't put a uh, like a like what they put on stoplights. You mm -hmm. can't put a camera on there that will take the guy's picture and send it to the computer and get a, a okay. moving yeah. violation. That's against the law unless you. I mean, maybe I'm mistaken and read something that's dated. That would really be groovy if we could get that, but I just don't know if. If it's legal to do. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's like you said, like uh, city manager said, we put a lot of stop signs up where the curbs are speeding or not. I don't know. It's a step in the right. I noticed on Second Street. You know what I mean? Yes. I so, noticed on Second Street when they put that new stop signs by the pantry there. Right. You know, that it has slowed people down because even the guys that want to go off the line at the stop sign and then race down to the next stop sign. They do stop at the next stop sign, right. amazingly. <laughs> you know, I mean, once in a while you'll see somebody yeah. kind of California roll it. But I'm with you. I'm concerned about the kid. And there's a lot of elder people like myself and older that, mm -hmm. that are toddling along with their dogs and some of their dogs aren't, you know. I'm with you. You know, so I mean, Older people tend to have, I hate to say it, but not quite the powers of concentration <laughs> that 25 year olds do, but the kids have no concentration of their Thank you, Tim. Yeah. Stay. Yeah. Well, so just as we have recognized, uh, many of us said that uh, uh, speeding and reckless driving is a growing problem. Uh, is the city or the police considering taking a sweeping type of action um, to crack down on it? There's the, the police department's always out there monitoring. Yeah, but I mean, uh, I know at least from your ground, you would basically have uh, police out there doing uh, uh, monitoring uh, and uh, catching people right there on the spot. I think they would come down to a staffing issue with our police department, their state. Yeah, that's a priority yeah. question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, Ken. Yeah, I think uh, the two stop signs that were put on in West 2nd Street. Mm -hmm. You know, I live on West Second, and I think that slowed down a lot. Where where there wasn't one on Washington, you know, used to be. Um, it's made a big difference for us. I know. Yeah. All right. Any other suggestions on number one, or any comments? Anyone? All right. Let's move on to public traffic sign request policy and procedure number two. Yeah, I think, um, thank you, Tim. Chair, this, this item um, kind of is reflective of, you know, the discussion we, we just had regarding stop sign requests. What we've seen, what we see in, in is uh, residents have to write a letter and 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 uh, has to be brought forward for full review of this subcommittee and ultimately the city council. Um, what some other cities have taken as an approach is uh, that, that there's a you know kind of a formalized process on um, you know right now it's it's it's, it's very very informal uh, where when you you uh, memorialize a request for stop sign uh, either by way of a form that can be put on our website uh, or through a form that can be downloaded uh, some of the intent is to ensure that those uh, residents that are you know, immediately adjacent to the location where stop sign is proposed to be or maybe requested um, are apprised and can either uh, support or oppose because we, we don't know, for example, the residents that were uh, that are located on that corner, um, whether they're in support or opposed. And, you know, just may be valuable to 
uh, bring in their, their perspective. Uh, they may have valuable information to share with what we're, we're talking about in terms of vegetation management, striping, et cetera. Um, so the staff thought this would be appropriate just to get uh, input from, from the subcommittee, whether there would be some value in memorializing the process or procedure for uh, these requests. We see them coming more and more. Um, and it, you know, uh, uh, I'll, I'll point to, is, say, for example, uh, City of San Mateo, they, they've got an online form uh, and it has a number of prompts uh, for uh, those residents who are interested in, in uh, requesting a stop sign. You know, just you describe the location, what's the nature of the traffic problem that they're concerned with, uh, how might a stop sign eliminate or reduce the, the issue, uh, and is there neighborhood support, uh, and are there other uh, uh, public facilities or, or uh, development that, uh, for example, location of the school in proximity to that to that intersection that help drive or support a, a need for a stop sign. So uh, again, uh, we, we didn't develop the form. We just wanted to get whether uh, feedback from the subcommittee, whether there's interest in kind of putting something that, together. That, 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 that kind of answers all the questions right there. If you have one, then when one comes forward to this and then up to council, it's got all your all the questions are answered on that. That's a great form. Especially like you said, the, the neighborhood support or not community support, but neighborhood because you may have people that are completely opposed to having a stop sign. <laughs> so, um, I, yeah, I to request for that. I, I kind of just, when I talked to Derek and Kevin and they said, well, listen, I don't have a request in here. I kind of don't. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's <laughs> pretty I think that'd be good to move forward with that and then actually have one on our website. I mean, you know, and well, then I people, think. you know, they know they get onto the, the city website and they see if you have a sign request and then boom, you're going down through the steps to do it. Then you come here, you have all that all the questions we're gonna ask them are gonna be answered. On this specific situation that we've been discussing, yes, so I know there's the people that live that we first discussed that have the, the horrendous foliage, right. you know, that um they had told me, I mean, I they would have been more both of the parents work, unfortunately, or one of them would have showed up here today. They are totally, they have no problem with the stop sign there. Okay. Now, people over um, Kingsley from them diagonally across, I don't, I think they're even actually new owners, and I haven't, I don't even, I don't, okay. I haven't had any other. Once again, back to the form. I mean, if I had the form, I would definitely be on. Yeah, it's again, it's forward with that. I mean, it can't be, why don't we bring it back again? We'll see if it meets with this. Uh, Absolutely. Needs approval or, and basically, everybody on that one block of North Jefferson, yes, that I live on, besides, and, and yes, Kenny lives on Second Street, but everybody has voted in favor of this. It's just that many of them. One thirty and a half of the workday is hard for many people. I was just going to say, uh, in the city of Ukiah, when we did this, we actually put a little note on the pole or somewhere around there and just said, considering stop sign, here's the day of the meeting. Yeah. Just so, because no one would really say, like in front to survey. It's just an idea. Yeah. I think that's a good idea to, to look at that one on the online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know whether you can see you know, the trend. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's a great idea, but there's always a thought. You know, I don't want to see us chasing our tail because everybody thinks they need a stop sign on their corner. Everybody to check the box off, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean they need to stop sign. I'd like to see it really followed up by our police department. If they uh, have an issue with stop sign or with uh, uh, speeders or somebody uh, taking corners too fast, we need an officer sitting there for a couple of days with that form and just confirming everything that is on that form. I don't want to see the city council getting a pile of stop sign requests and, and half the information is not right. Right. So the verification process to me is going to be very important mm -hmm. to make them Yeah, Gus, when you see the police car sitting there, you slow down. Yeah, well, th there's a way, you know, hopefully uh, police are smarter than that, yeah. where they can push back a little bit, yeah, not yeah. be, you need to be a, a lot of uh, vision there, you know. 
All righty, well, thank you on that one. Number two, <laughs> let's move into number three, acceptance of the FAA Airport Improvement Grant Funding Agreement. Okay, um, thank you, Chair. Yep. The, this this item um, was brought to the subcommittee. It's, it's uh, actually on the council agenda this week for our uh, proposed ratification. The, the city has a history of uh, entering into funding agreements with the Federal Aviation Administration for uh, airport improvements, uh, particularly airport safety improvements uh, that are identified on our uh, five-year airport capital improvement program. Uh, one of the projects that uh, we previously completed with FAA funding was uh, the uh, re replacement of the Happy and Real lights uh, on on our on our taxiway. Uh, we we still have uh, malfunctioning uh, Happy and Real lights on Runway 32, uh, which was identified on our on our in short our ASIP our, our capital improvement program. Uh, we received a funding agreement from FAA with a very short turnaround time to get it executed. Uh, normally we would bring these to the council uh, for approval prior to execution. In this case, given the really it, it, a short, the short turnaround time because of the nature of the funding, which is um, uh, the BIL funding through the federal government, uh, it, it was necessary to uh, expedite our, our ratification or our, our, our approval of the agreement, uh, but we are seeking council approval. Uh, the intent would be to uh, hire a, a qualified firm. Uh, most recently, we contracted with CNS. Uh, our, our city public works director is working on a, a request for a proposal, request for qualification uh, for a firm to uh, do the design work for this, this project. Uh, the grant is about eighty nine, roughly eighty nine thousand dollars, which would cover the cost of doing the design for the, these lights. These are again uh, critical safety improvements. So uh, we want to bring it to the subcommittee uh, ultimately with the goal, uh, which is on the council agenda, to uh, support ratification of the agreement. Uh, one of the things when we commit to uh, funding, there is a ten percent ca uh, cash match uh, for FAA. Uh, Funded projects, uh, we normally get at least uh, five percent of that back through reimbursement from the Caltrans Division of Aeronautics, and then the remainder gets funded through uh, through the airport mm -hmm. enterprise. Mm -hmm. uh, so about five percent mm -hmm. of the costs mm -hmm. would come out of the airport mm -hmm. uh, enterprise. So um, pretty pretty standard, uh, nothing unusual with respect to this request. Just want to note that. Uh, uh, it's unusual because we did we did uh, execute the agreement uh, prior to council's uh, approval, uh, noting that it was part of a capital improvement project that we had previously funded for half the airport, but not the other half. Do we what? Not, I just have one question: Do we have? Are we required to do that study, or we just can we just replace lights on our house? You know what I mean? I'm just asking. Yeah, so that. under the FAA process, we were required to put uh, the the uh, the construction activities out to bid. Oh, and sure. so we would, we would have formal design documents drawn and uh, you know, conduct a, uh, a formal bid pro process because it's because it's federal funding. Right. Um, and so in this case, it, and it's a complicated enough project. It's not as, as simple as just... Uh, you know, replacing the light bulb, gotcha. uh, and and given the 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 nature of the their their critical safety features, um, so you know, with design work, it's it's really important. What does that ten percent match look like? Uh, it would be so ten percent would be about eighty nine hundred, and out of the general fund or out of the airport. Well, be out of the airport enterprise, but we do backfill the airport sure. with. With general fund and and of that eighty nine hundred five percent, we would seek reimbursement from from Caltrans Division of Aeronautics. Uh, so we would be on the hook for a, a approximately half of that eighty nine hundred. So you know, a, a, a round round number is forty five hundred dollars. 
and this is something we we uh, our our uh, public works director just uh, participated in the inspection from Caltrans, mm -hmm. and and that's a, a, an item they noted under inspection was uh, the the happy uh, lights uh, as well as the real lights on uh, runway thirty two. No, I'm I'm in favor of this and uh, supporting or ratifying the action taken by the staff. Me too on that one, plus it's on our agenda tomorrow. And I think it's, you know, long term, we, we, I think in terms of a kind of process improvement would be bring the airport capital improvement program forward and, and have that be ratified or approved by council uh, with the resolution authorizing us to apply for and accept grant funds for those projects. Because one of the other critical projects that we've done some design work on is the um, infill drainage. There's some, uh, we get during rain events, we get some flooding, which impacts again uh, aviation safety. And that's a, a project which we would like to, uh, uh, we think we, 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 we uh, qualify for funding. It's just, you know, Getting in the paperwork and being able to execute that agreement to, to do the next stage of the work. When would you be looking to do that uh, overview of capital improvement? Uh, I, I think that would be, you know, we'll do the copy. We have the kind of capacity to do about one, I think, CIP project a year. Uh, so it'd be, it'd be probably 25, 26. Okay, because the only concern I have is backfilling uh, the airport fund with the general fund. You know, it, as long as it's within reason, right? You know, right. Um, I think to see us undertaking a big project, and I, at some point, like to uh, see where we stand with our rentals and our gas sales, and are we still back when we get yeah. it on? Part part of this yet yeah, is to build additional city on the hangar. Yeah. Well, that's probably number one. It's a revenue source. So, thank you. Anything else? Mm -hmm. All right. Number four, 101 North project update. Uh, yeah, I can I can take this one if you want. Um, we, everyone's in, in town has noticed that the project's going very slow with the fence around it and kind of questioning what's happening. We had a meeting with our building department and the project applicant last week. Uh, they submitted some plans that really were not adequate and it's not designed by a professional and. Since it's a commercial building, it needs to be, you know, plans submitted by an architect or engineer. So we discussed that with them, and hopefully uh, they'll be submitting some plans soon. They did do some work uh, with an encroachment permit, which allows them to go into the right of way. Um, you know, that might have exceeded the scope a little bit there, but we're working with them to get some plans in um, so that we can get this project up and running. They seem to understand. I think it's obviously like every project like this, it's a money issue. So hopefully they can get the original architect who did the planning drawings to submit um, regular you know, stamp drawings that would be adequate. So I can, you can keep this on here if you want. I mean, I guess the point was we did meet with them last week to let them know and nudge them along and hopefully we can uh, do that. We can just put it on the like move it into the standing line. You can just do a quick update on it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything with PG and E holding them up? They did mention that, but it's not really. Um, I mean, the fact is, Gus, they haven't really submitted plans. So plans really. Uh, PG and E. They did have some trouble with PG and E that they worked out that took some time and cost them more than they thought. But it's really the plans part that. Um, is holding them up at this point. Thank you. All right, number five, ST Road frontage improvements. Um, I can talk about this with Vanessa's help. Uh, I think this was uh, Mr. St. Angelo's request to put on the agenda. Um, yes, this is regarding the ST Road apartments and their encroachment into the city's right of way with improvements um, and the question of whether. Um, that you know, maybe that was too much of an encroachment. Um, I don't know. Vanessa's been following this pretty, pretty closely, so I don't know if I could just turn it over to you to give us an overview, or maybe Richard wants to express his concerns. 
I think um, Richard and I spoke on the phone, gosh, it was probably more than a month ago at this point. Um, but we did have a good conversation. And so I think the, the gist of it is that the apartment project, um, they are optimizing the space in their parcel and in that existing parcel, so just even though it's on the outskirts, I look at this as infill development. It's not a new subdivision, so it's an infill development. And so the nature of this parcel is that there's a very large area between the parcel boundary and the edge of pavement on ASCII. And so that area is city right of way, um, right of way to ASCII Road. Um, and so my understanding is that um, Mr. St. Angelo is concerned that this private project is encroaching excessively into public lands. Is that fair? Is that a fair summary? Um, not excessively, it's just encroaching, period. And they are, I'll give you that, they are. They're, they're encroaching by 25 feet. Uh, give or take, I think there's between 20 and 25 feet along the front of the fairs, but it is a large. I would like to finish with the Sure. That's it. Um, I think that that's it. And so as part of the project approvals, um, the, 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 the site improvements are very specific to the building, um, to the buildings that are going in there. Um, out front along the Asti Road frontage, there is going to be a new curb gutter and sidewalk. And behind that curb gutter and sidewalk, there's going to be landscaping, uh, storm drainage facilities. You'll also hear them call LID facilities, um, but it's really a stormwater treatment area that's going to serve uh, that property. Um, it's also going to be privately maintained by them. Um, They're going to have their bridge encroachment. They've got a bridge that they need to use to cross some wetlands uh, that they're going to have in the right of way so that they can access that property. And storm drainage improvements, the you know, the typical uh, sewer water infrastructure. And they're also going to have uh, fire required, some building elevated walkways attached to the building that are gonna have their foundation elements um, in a piece of that right way. And so those are all of the encroachments that are going to be in the Asti Road right of way. So that's gonna be in city property, those it's encroachments? Correct. That's correct. So will it be in a, when it's all said and done, will it be an improvement to the city's property? It will, it is constituted as an improvement. Yes, I, I agree. Um, now, but Vanessa, I'm kind of on the side note, you know, my pet peeve is when the developer uh, cuts into the roadway to run into the sewer and the water, and he leaves with maybe a 20 inch trench uh, that he paves over, and with inside of a year, it's a big bump hazard. Sure. Can we get them to extend that to maybe 25 feet so it's a wider patch area? Like so, the Lenson project did up here across from the Patriot? Now, the city standards require trench restoration, pavement restoration, right. to have what's called a T cut. So they have their proper trench, but then you have, I can't remember what the standard is, but so many inches of like pull back pavement um, to minimize that. Um, I also, um, in, in years past, asked trench restorers, pavers, to just mound a little bit high, yeah. about a quarter to a half inch high, um, and, and it just settles out over the next couple of years, and you and I see that thing. But I'm, I, I, I understand, the trench settles, um, you yeah. get this kind of differential settling there, and well, it's basically yeah. a long, well, maybe a long if, yeah. <laughs> if they're looking to encroach on our property, we can turn around and say to them, fine, but let's extend that to 25, 30 feet, whatever you think is appealing. So we are we are limited to conditions of approval. And yeah, I, but, I but, don't recall what is in there, but some projects require like an overlay, of, you know, across the frontage. Yeah. I don't know if that needed in here. But they come to us to ask us to encroach on our property, right? They are. So they, if you want to encroach on our property, you do this. We'll, we'll, we can explore that, okay. sure. And I'll look at the conditions of approval and see what's in there. Yeah. And, and and I think maybe maybe just a little overview of the, the process. Um this this project went went uh through a design review with the planning commission, uh ultimately went with council uh, and 
you know, part of what they showed as development was you know was reviewed by by both those bodies, and then ultimately the conditions of approval uh, are reflected on the improvement plans that they submit. So the the civil engineering plans that they submit for uh, sewer, water, streets, uh, and other utilities. Uh, go through a review process to determine, you know, to ensure compliance with city standards and requirements. Um, and the end result is for those improvements that are in the public right of way, those are covered under an encroachment permit for uh, performing that work in the public right of way. So I guess where I'm going with this is, is this not unusual to have uh, improvements in the public right of way? Uh, so long as they, they meet city standards. And then we often see that right. developers who are required to uh, construct storm drain improvements, uh, sidewalks, and uh, street sections, parking, and, and other improvements. Um, and what, what staff does is ensure that those improvements are consistent with both the conditions of approval. Uh, the improvement plans uh, and 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 our our standards that are imposed as part of the enforcement permit. So uh, it, it it it's it's you know we're not granting them anything unusual. Um, and where there are improvements, uh, uh, a, a, an example could be um, the renter fueling station where they have a lid facility in front that's intended to address their storm drainage. They have a lead maintenance agreement. So uh, just like this, there is a maintenance agreement that would require uh, the, the the property owners to, to maintain the, 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 the those uh, the landscaping and other improvements in, in that area so as to uh, reduce car risk and liability. Um, and again, it all gets back to you know what what the conditions of approval are uh, that were approved by by commission. And they are, I found that they are required to overlay a two inch overlay oh. along their frontage. Sure. So we'll have to see the pavement out there. Do you have any other? Yes, sir. I don't know what's being said. Yep. Um, if we go back to the beginning, back to the planning commission hearing, uh, our only concern at that time was the safety of people at trip traversing 45 miles an hour in front of the hill. No one noticed the fact of the matter was. Their improvements extended 25 feet past the property. No comments, no notice, no nothing. That, that was never discussed ever at the planning commission or the city council. Uh, Mr. Wolf, 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 you guess it? I don't know if you're aware of that or not, that their improvements were 25 feet west of their of their east of their of their property. That to me is a taking of public property. And also, of course, taking the public property, which is detrimental, is that in this instance, um, there's inadequate parking for the amount of units and, re and residents that are there. That inadequate parking is, was allowed by the bonus densities and by the uh, draconian uh, builder's remedy law that allowed that project in the first place at such a high density. Now, where are those people going to park? They can't park on the east side adjacent to the development because there's no place to park and there's a fight room. on the west side that's all unimproved beyond the existing edge of pavement and 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 the uh fight range. so i don't know where they're going to park and they are going to park somewhere because there's just not adequate parking so when you allow them to extend 25 feet west of their of their each of those parking lots that eliminates the possibility for future parking which will be required my opinion. So that that reduces the um, ability to mitigate the impact of that development. It's inevitable. Because I live on the hill, if I see some of the parts in the fight right lane, I'm gonna call immediately to the police folks say someone's in a, in a tow over there. Get up, please. That's gonna happen again and again and again. And that's gonna be to the police department, you can use the residents residents and give me a bad name as a as a complainant. Now when they did that, the rationale for the 25 foot improvement goes way back to the fact that there's a drain, existing drainage swale on the southern end of the property, which they proposed a bridge over that drainage swale because the kid couldn't modify it. 
And that bridge services their parking lot because that's where they have their, their second entrance and second exit parking lot. The only way they could have changed that would be to have moved the second entrance and exit the parking lot further north, which would have been in the line of the building, which would have meant actually separating the building in two buildings. Was that was that ever discussed? No. Was that ever brought the attention of the planning director by the city engineering staff and by the city engineer down at down uh, in San Rosa? No. I think that was a really, real, a very uh, deleterious effect. I think that was a failure of our engineers and also a secondary failure of the planning director not seeing that 25 foot enclosure. But then he didn't see that because he relies on the engineers to bring that to his attention. Do we have the corrupting lines up here that we can bring up and see where this is? Bring them up on this CIS. I'm trying to figure out the case of the site. Either that or the landscape. You know what I'm it's, 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 it's uh, uh, under Mosty Road Function Improvements. It was never it was never shown in schematic form. It's always shown in working drawing form, which makes it very difficult for a layman or lay, lay person to interpret where the property line is and where the development line is. Mm -hmm. Now, according to Mr. Lance, he was informed by Governor Newsom he couldn't object to anything. But that was based on the fact that anything didn't Hey, David, I can't hear you. Thank you. What's the address that you want me to look up? Uh, so could, we, could we look up the Aussie Road Apartments, apartments Project? Or engineers right now? You know what I'm saying? So I understand your point, but let's be very respectful. Okay. I, 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 okay. I, I'm being, I'm, I can't respect what I believe is an error. Okay. I understand that. But in public meeting right now, please, while I'm running this meeting, we will respect everybody in this room. I understand you're frustrated, but please respect I'm it. I'm not frustrated. I'm just stating a fact. Yeah. In my opinion, the engineer did not bring that to the attention of the planning director. I can, I can bring it up to you. Yeah, sorry, I'm not, I don't use GIS enough. Yeah, you might find it on 100 ASTI. Yeah. Uh... And I can't really fault our planning director or our city council or our, or our planning commission Let's go to GIS. for missing that because it was in the weeds of the working drawings and so many elements. Is that what you're looking for? Uh, yeah, that's the word that came from. Let me go up here. Let's get the pull up the GIS for the second. Ah, okay, what? I'll stop sharing. And if the gentleman who was just speaking, can you state your name for the record? Yes, my name is Richard St. Angelo, address 218 Milo Drive, immediately east of 100 Aston Road. Richard St. Angelo, thank you. Sorry. We should have on the we should have on that old agenda item uh working drawings that were shown to planning commission and the city council with their approval. Hey David, would you be able to share your screen so it's part of the record? I thought I did. Let's go back to Zoom one second here. Uh, it says share screen. This one? Oh, you got to pick the. Oh, this one. Here we go. Share. All right. Here we go. Can you see that, Mike? Yes, I can. Thank you. So, uh, just for reference, the this is our GIS, Geographic Information System. And the property line is we're referring to 401 uh, Osti Road. You can. Uh, uh, I do want to indicate that the lines as shown on the JS uh, do not always necessarily align uh, with the property boundaries as uh, it would if, if they were surveyed. Uh, we can see that when we go to other homes from the property line often we'll cut a home in half. Uh, but this is the property boundary and it does show the, the Oski Road right away, including properties like this, which are uh, owned by uh, SMART, 
uh, smart train. Uh, but I think what Mr. St. Angelo is referring to is this area uh, between this, what's identified here as a, uh, the Eastern property boundary and uh, the existing pavement. So there is what we, we identified as existing public right of way. And maybe Mr. Angelo, you're, you're referring to your 25 feet you're talking about is this piece here. Exactly. Um, and it, it is uh, quite common that uh, developments, uh, private development where, you know, buildings and so forth are located on the private parcel, uh, but the other public improvements in particular, the driveways, the storm drain improvements, the sidewalks, the back of walks, and even the landscaping associated with the sidewalk is situated within the public right of way. Uh, we're not. We're not obviously in this case looking at the um, the improvement drawings, but you can imagine if the sidewalk was back here, uh, how then the sidewalks would in effect be on private property. And 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 that's there's a key difference because the sidewalks are intended to uh, be adjacent to existing pavement. Um, I, I, I I disagree uh, with with the assertion that council was not apprised of this because there was quite a bit of discussion about uh, no parking. Let me finish. Let me, let me interrupt. That never came up at the council meeting that I was at ever. There was never any question about the encroachment of twenty five feet. Everybody could not see that on the drawings that the council saw. You didn't see this nice picture here. You saw the working drawings. And it was really hard to determine where the property line was unless you, unless you understood where it was, understood the drawing. That never came up. The only thing we were concerned about was the safety, speed. That was it. And the, the encroachment on the property line, over the property line, I didn't see until I had to study the plans later. And I, I think that because our city officials, both elected and our planning staff were not apprised of that situation by the city engineer who's, who analyzed those plans. That was a problem. And the result of the fact that we gave those folks 25 feet of public right away. Now, I understand that it's very common for the sidewalk to be adjacent to the property line. That's five feet. I also understand it's very common for the bigger planning strip, either between the sidewalk and the pavement or between the sidewalk and the property line of five feet. That's 10 feet. So I understand a 10, 10 foot of, a 10 foot of curtain would be standard and okay. But it's the extra 15 feet that precludes any further improvement to the east side of the Bastion Road, which will be necessary. The fact that there's nothing we're talking about. I think that somehow that solution or that way of thinking was not applied to that. I don't think, I think it's common to approach five or 10 feet in the public right of way for sidewalk and 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 planetary. 25 feet is crazy. It's wrong. And it precludes us from making make, uh, make any improvements to Ashley Road, which will take care of future problems. Now, the other reason for that 25 foot building was that the southern access, which you cannot see on this drawing, which you show them on the working drawings, to their parking lot is going over a sacrosanct drainage soil, existing drainage soil. They can't improve on. So the solution on that was to build a bridge over that. The other solution would have been to move that driveway north so it did not have to go over the parking parking park, 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 park soil. And they didn't do that. That solution was not entertained or analyzed or committed or communicated to our planning, planning staff. I think that's a real problem. Where is where is that where they're planning and putting this bridge on here? Further south, right? Or, yeah, so there's, see that there, along there's the a storm the, feature that runs you know, up right to further south, just right south. about, I think it's right in further here. Further, further south, further, further, further south, further south, further south, just above the Aston Road side, above the Aston Road side. Right 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 That's a sacrosanct natural drainage swale. What's the word for that? Wetlands. Wetlands, there we go. And there, and they, and the only way to access on the southern access to the parking lot was to over go through the wetlands. They couldn't do that. So they had to build build a bridge over it, and that determined the twenty five foot extension of the encroachment. 
That was not brought to the attention of the science department. Okay. I, well, I can't say what it was or what. Yeah, at this point. No, I, I, I talked to the science department and it was not brought to the attention. Well, I think the, the as if, if I understand the history, the, the desire, uh, like many developers, is to seek a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers to uh, discharge fill into the wetlands. Uh, we have found, and I think this is very much the case, and they will admit it, that uh, the resource agencies uh, frown negatively upon that. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, they they will desire and request uh, alternative actions that uh, do not result in the fill of those the wetland features. Uh, again, I don't uh, the, the term that's being used is is wrong. Um, I, 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 I think in this case the, to provide a driveway across that feature uh, is a means of providing ingress while meeting. The environmental requirements of the federal resource agencies. I um, I agree. I, I, mean, I agree with you. But the other solution would have been to move the driveway north beyond the wetlands. That could have been done. Could have been more simple. Could have been done, but it was not the focus. And that would have mitigated the necessity of a 25 foot bridge over the wetlands. It would have, been, would have mitigated the necessity of 25 foot encroachment. I agree with the fact that you could encroach. In the public right of way, the standard five feet for the sidewalk and five feet for the sidewalk, either side of the sidewalk. That's fine. There's another 15 feet, I think, is excessive. And if they're taking public property, also is would prevent us from improving Astro in the future, if necessary, to, to ameliorate the parking problem. I, I think we're just, we may have serious problems and we're, we're really. Um, Keeping us from solving any other problems will eventually, in, in my opinion, will arise from the fact of inadequate, inadequate parking there. So, Mr. Lands informed me that he couldn't object to that, according to government, government news, but that was only for the interior improvements. That wasn't for the exterior improvements. The, the, the exterior improvements, exterior of the parking line, that's entirely beyond the scope of the building company law. Richard, I, I think what we have to do at this time is, is to kind of sit back and and uh, let staff and our city attorney who looked at this as well, you know, get their arms around it and come back with a better answer because we could sit here looking dumbly on one another. Thank you very much. I, and I, it's not say like this. Yeah. I know it's late and I was negligent in not seeing that encroachment two years ago because I could read the drawings and I didn't, I didn't notice it. And that's my profession. Mr. So, Chair, what do, you, what do you feel? Yeah, I agree. Let's let's bring that back with some better answers here and, and look at some stuff. Have uh, Alex look at it and and uh, we'll bring it back. So, like uh, as one of the Walter said, we're not just staring at each other with no answers here. Let's get uh, let's have them look at it. We'll come back. Well, I would I would very much like to be able to anticipate future improvements necessary in that in that specific stretch of Astro to accommodate the increased density of what eighty apartments and hardly. Any departments yeah, and I uh, also see two hundred members. That's all. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I think I think what uh, Mr. St. Angelo is re reflecting upon is that there isn't a comprehensive uh, design guideline for Aussie Road. Uh, ultimately, if there was, that would guide the design review of uh, uh, any improvements. Uh, again, in you know, terms wrong, uh, it, it, it was used in, and I don't think it's, it's, it's a way of saying it's wrong. It's, just, it's it, what I think is being reflected is that there, there needs to be a design guideline that's applied to development mm -hmm. as it comes forward. I think that's the, 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 the next step would be to uh, develop a streetscape design that guides the review process from, from the planning commission and council and staff that dictates and provides for exactly what we want to see from a design perspective. Because uh, otherwise, what we're doing is we're reacting to a proposed design as it's being brought forward by developers on a piecemeal basis, because there is no comprehensive design for, for Oski Road in terms of, you know, if, if, if the goal has is, is been articulated is we want to ensure that there's future parking along uh, the east side of the road. Well, that, that 
necessitates a certain design state. Uh, we we can look at Foothill Boulevard as an example, and, and and that came with a lot of thought and process in terms of you know what is the design uh, for for Foothill Boulevard and reflecting that in the design of those developments as they move forward. We did not have that for us here. Unfortunately, we were put in a position with respect to a development project where we had the zoning in place and they had certain by ride uses that we had to approve. Uh, the public improvement process that comes along with that, again, nothing wrong, it's, it's a reflection of how do you deal with the site constraints that exist and to allow the project to move forward as it's provided for in law. And, and, and what we have is, is what we have, uh, two driveways, and in this case, environmental rules triggering the need for a bridge. Uh, we've we've done everything we can through our conditions of approval to protect the interests of the city by putting the developer making the developer responsible for those public improvements or uh, those improvements in the public right away just as we would with any other other development so uh you know i, I guess i i where I, I i differ from the comments is, is right or wrong is it's just a, a reflection of where we stand because of our our, design, our maybe our lack of design guidelines for for Osby Road, and if we had those, we may have come up with a different uh, a different design uh, for that. And if you know the, the intent was to have a much wider landscape, we would have you know could have necessitated pushing everything back. Which again, real world constraints. There's wetlands. What does that mean? That means we inherit those wetlands. We become responsible for that, and we have to get the permits to put in the parking and all that for that. So. That, that's just a, a, a comment about trying to address the environmental requirements with, with drainage features, but I think really what it speaks to is that we, we didn't have the comprehensive design guidelines in place to really guide what I think Mr. Sanders was referring to. Yeah, nor did we have the time because we were kind of under the gun to get that approved, if I'm not mistaken, and it's kind of mandated already right. that it's right. coming, get ready. Yeah, I think, it, again, it, I, I didn't see it as a wrong or right. It was it's how we responded to a development as it was proposed, given the conditions that exist in that site. Any other comments? Um, I, I I stand by what I said. Um, I I think there are solutions to the situation exists exist, as it exists right now, which would include the bridge over the wetland as a necessary undesirable and necessary element, but north of the wetlands. I'd like to see their improvements step back to within 10 feet of the property line and there have the sidewalk and a planning ship from there. So that will allow at least another under 200 feet of parking in the future, or else nice landscaping as we have on, on Fiddle Boulevard. That, that all, all occurs within 70 foot right away, if I'm not, not, if I'm not mistaken. And that's not exactly what we have at Aspen Road. And that wouldn't in, that would not um, in, encroach on their road indemnity, lot line uh, improvements at all, not one bit. Not one bit. That, so that that's within our purview. Anything outside of the property line is the city's. Inside is theirs. And so that, that, at least that's my interpretation. Now, We'll have another one next yeah. week. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for those looking in my eyes. Thank you. All right. Now, now another thing, too, I was hoping to get an agenda. I guess Kevin disturbed me. Was, is there any possibility of talking about my, my little driveway, Live Oak Drive? On the next agenda. It's not on the agenda. It's been just, yeah. Okay, great. So, that'd be fine. Okay. Um, anything else on that item? Anyone? All right, let's move on to number six, November, December special meeting, and then October 22nd, Kansas. Okay, uh, Chair, based on direction from a subcommittee, we, we uh, moved these meetings from monthly to every other month. Uh, so the, the normal uh, routine would be to have an October meeting, uh, but given we're in September, it would otherwise uh, going to every other month of November. Uh, it just so happens that the November and December meetings fall in close proximity to both Thanksgiving and the Christmas holidays. 
Uh, so we wanted we put this on as a discussion item. Uh, you know, the, there's some different options for you to consider. It would be uh, one uh, proceed with the October meeting as as originally uh, planned and continue with cancellation of November December, uh, or or otherwise uh, look at special meeting dates uh, in uh, in November and December to accommodate you know a special meeting. I think we should uh, look at special meeting dates. Yeah, if we have anything, I mean, I talk to Council Member Walter all the time. If he's got anything, he'll call me and back and forth. And if there's something that comes up, we can absolutely set a special meeting and, and come in and do it. But I like this right now, just keep that 20 second count. Okay, yeah. and we'll just coordinate yeah. that chair with you and absolutely. and, and uh, Council Member Walter on uh, uh, a meeting date for the comics. We obviously have other subcommittees right. scheduled, yes. so we'll have to figure out the date. Well, the only thing is I'm planning on uh, being out of town for the entire month of December. I'm going to be looking to request an absence for the December 1st, okay. uh, first meeting in December. But I'll be back in January for the first meeting. We'll call up with you back here. Yeah. Yes. All righty. We can move down to F um standing items and if we want we can kind of do it like we did before just kind of think through these things a lot of them we've gone through i know hector has one that he wants to talk about a couple of them that'll be the most time but for the most part we can just get through these guys yeah hector if you want to take the yeah. next one take oh, the next one switch <laughs> <parks. laughs> yeah it's a switch over to parks yeah no uh so just just to start off with uh item number one that i'm standing items for parks uh open space uh portico creek open space uh, vegetation management effort you can see on your screen there that's the proposed vegetation uh, uh loan for this upcoming year uh this is this is phase four we've, the last few years we've tackled uh, a lot of vegetation a lot of area roughly about 50 to 60 acres and uh the goal for the 10 years to create to create a fire break uh between the open space and our neighbor and our neighbors there and uh they'll create a little fire break in our western slopes there Cloverdale. and as we all know just to go through there real quick i mean this all helps out with, with fire prevention uh you know reducing underbrush and uh, removing dead wood protecting wildlife and and reducing erosion and and like i mentioned this lastly just just uh you know protecting nearby owners and communities uh, so yeah, uh, talking to the Northern Sonoma County Fire Fields Fuel Crew, we're hoping to start to undertake this project here in the next few uh, few weeks, to where the crews will come in and start cutting vegetation, and then we will do power burning uh, later in the future. Is that tapped into that seven point four million dollars that I keep harping about? That's above yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm just weird. I'm never gonna let that one go because yeah. when they announced it, I thought, well, how are we gonna capitalize on right. getting some of that sea shovels in the ground? Yep. You know what I mean? And that, that project is still, still going. We've been uh, filled out all the some of the paperwork now. We met with them twice. Uh, and then just now, just all the paperwork. I don't think they're planning that for any of those projects until the springtime. Uh, and, so. you know, and just from a budget perspective, uh, we, we, the, the council has approved budget uh, about $30,000 annually. So mm -hmm. this is, you know, we're now into uh, about 120. Twenty thousand to one hundred fifty thousand dollars investment in just veg management in Porto Creek. So it's just a reflection of the costs that uh, it, we've incurred to, um, you know, address you know some of the vegetation um, reduction that has been necessary to reduce you know fire threatened fuels within the within the open space reserve. And you know it's uh, it it uh, uh, you know it's, it's 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 a pretty significant investment and it. And it you know, on top of that, it's a uh, significant time from, from our park staff uh, managing the contract and overseeing uh, the process and the signage and uh, the associated you know, work in coordination with the fire district and the fuels crew to get you know to get the project done. So good work, good work by our park staff <laughs> uh, managing a, a, a very significant asset in the in way of our portable creek open space. Yeah, so just going down, thanks, thanks, David. Just going down the line, number two here, just real quick, you know, Long Beach, uh, uh, Cloverdale Parks for Preventive uh, Tree Pruning. So, this is an effort that we undertake every year. Uh, we work with local uh, 
arborists and local local tree companies to come out and to come out and help us, uh, you know, perform preventative tree uh, pruning in all our parks. Uh, as you can see, the rubric's there. We normally hire. I'm a certified arborist myself, so we normally bring in a second opinion. And at times, depending on where the, the tree is located, we'll bring a third opinion uh, for most of the, you know, just to, so we can get different eyes. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, enhance the, the precision and efficiency of the tree management and uh, to improve safety. Uh, so right now, the County Tree Service was a company, a local company that was awarded the, the contract. Uh, he's he's going to be here with roughly about three weeks. And uh, some of these areas that we're targeting are, uh, you know, we're mainly focusing on high traffic zone areas, uh, playground structures, and areas where we have high uh, high traffic. Right now, he's currently working with cottages up above, as well as, uh, and then he'll be switching over to Clark Park. Uh, again, this effort will continue here for the next few weeks. Uh, and yeah, this just with an effort to keep our, our, our playground safe and a lot of thought and a lot of you know, general fund money is supposed to do this. Uh, and I, I, can, I can see the, the benefits now for the last few years. We've had just minimum blend drop and we knock on wood, we haven't had any, any major incidents in our parks. And I think that's part of it because of all the effort in the tree pruning and preventative maintenance that we've been implementing. Hector, when we hire uh, Wayne to go in and do certain sections like that, what, what's our bang for our buck? Is that two years, three years? Yeah, it's about three years. But so what we try to do, I try to split the town in quadrants. So I'll, I'll spend this year, we'll, we'll, because we have so many trees. So yeah. this year we'll target a section of the city park, and then the next year we'll target Ferber Park, and then we'll just kind of take it like that. Uh, and Wayne from the Economy Tree Service is, uh, he normally donates. A lot of a lot of his time, mm -hmm. uh, and he's on call basis too as well. So if we ever have an emergency, he's someone you can call to see him show up. Uh, and again, he's certified arborist himself, so that that really is a big asset for us. Uh, he really is a really nice yeah, guy. He, is. he really tries to help out with us and try to work with our budget too as well. Yeah. Good deal. Potential park, park enhancements. Well, that's been there's one of the things we're looking at. One of the we have in our budget, we uh, we got a couple of quotes already. It's the Ferber Park replacement, uh, the playground replacement. Uh, we really haven't dove in it too much with, with Kevin. We, we got two quotes so far. We're hoping to get a third one. Uh, we have a couple of designs out there. So this is I'm for sure we're going to bring this forward here when we have that those designs and and. Uh, Bring that forward in a later future, but for now we're just back up well, it's some really it's gonna be really really nice, some cool playground uh enhancements for the little kids that we're probably really planning. Stuff for the pickleball players, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they, yeah, we do have some of the pickleball players. We uh we have some uh we're working with the uh with the trainer right now. We have some pickleball classes at Urban oh. Park. Uh we're getting getting all that paperwork ready to go right now. We've added a, a utility box uh, for the pickleball equipment. equipment so they can store the equipment. I'm telling you that thing's used. Don't do it. And that. <laughs> <very nice. laughs> if we have four there. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, yeah I get I talk to Brad on a daily basis. Yeah. yeah. Or so, so yeah, so that and then and then the the I don't know before you scout that. Yeah, so we are, are just finishing up a contract with an architect who's gonna for a small amount, who's going to come in and uh, assess the building and then uh, interview us on our needs for the building. Uh, we did receive the, uh, what was it, like 260000 in the CDBG grant. Uh, we request you for your help on that for the ADA improvements. We also have some park impact fees, so we want to combine the two, get that thing up and running, and have it just a great community asset for uh, a recreation program and other uses. It's taking a while, but we do have some money coming, so yeah. Well, as long as we're doing it right and uh, you know, meeting with a group of people, I know Hector's going to be part of that. Anybody from like the uh, baseball leagues or anything or the scouts, Girl Scouts? Well, I think like for the programming needs, so they're going to the architects basically going to ask us, hey, what do you want to do in here? Who's going to be using it? I mean, we can bring other people in on that depending on what his questions are, but. Then I'll take get a sense of what we want to do with the building, and then start coming up with some numbers. Right. I think he's going to assess the roof. 
the HVAC, all of that stuff. Topo maps, and you know, we're hoping that you're, you know, we mentioned it a few times during this this committee, and hopefully in the, in the near future we can start collecting revenue. We can do a, a full kitchen there, so we can start renting it out to for parties in town. Yes. Start bringing some revenue back to the parks, to the city. Yeah. And just the the last one, the parks this is the parks superintendent update. You know, we're just going to continue to monitor all playgrounds, service requests that come in on a daily basis. All our all our facility our facilities, all our new facilities. There's been so there's so many events now, so we, we continue to work with local leagues and, and all the event coordinators. Um, yeah, just keep keeping up all the work the that's coming up. So, so yeah. striking plan. You're on the hook there, Vanessa. Yeah, so uh, we've got, I think since our last meeting, we have received the 100% plans, uh, specs and estimate from WTRANS. And so, you, you know, and I've been touching base with Derek on what do we, where do we go from here? I think um, we've talked before about kind of the, the, I guess, wrestling match between slurry ceiling portions of the boulevard and getting striping in and mm -hmm. who came first, the chicken or the egg. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, I think where we are landing is that there is just not budget. Um, and so the engineer's estimates are in your packet um, for Cloverdale Boulevard striping itself. We've got an engineer's estimate of 757, mm -hmm. almost $758,000. Um, okay, and then, and then we've got an estimate also for Foothill Boulevard, uh, much cheaper at 333K. And Treadway was another one. We were looking at about 49K um, where, for where, Treadway. Where would, where, Vanessa, where would um, Foothill Boulevard be from where to where? I, I want to say it's the whole limit. It's but in the entirety. Yeah, yeah I think it's oh. the entirety of Foothill Boulevard. And same thing for the for Cloverdale Boulevard. We're at the northmost limits to the southmost limits. So um, what do we have money to do now? Yeah. No. Not much. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 pretty skinny. So what what we did ask the traffic design engineer to do is to break up the boulevard, because because the boulevard is the hot ticket here, and so to break up the boulevard by segments according to our pavement report, and so each page is one of our official city segments, um, and so um, they've also laid out on these individual plan sheets which segments are proposed for slurry seal in the next five years. Um, and so that at least kind of gives us just a different lens to look at these various segments. Um, but in, in short, and, and we could certainly break out this engineer's estimate and say like, okay, it's not it's not a thousand feet of striping, it's whatever, 200 feet per on this segment and however many you know stop bars and crosswalks and whatever else is needed. Um, but we don't, I think this, the, the bad news there is there's just not budget for that. Well, it's the um, uh, three quarters of percent sales tax uh, passes. Um, there, there may be some money depending on how the council wants to do that. Uh, to at least get some of it. Sure. I know major part portion should go into the streets. But like people always said, we have to preserve the good streets now and make sure they stay for preventive maintenance as well. Uh, any any direction there? Any? I mean, that's you know, they have budget. You know, yeah, right. we're kind of in the holding pattern right now. Yeah, so we'll we'll circle back after the election and see where this yeah, ballot right. measure went and, and go from there. I think that's the best bet is find out if we if it does pass, you know, and start sure. adding some money over and then. Get after this thing and pick sections. Sure. And uh, oh, that's all we're going to make some progress on it, you know, but yeah. Uh, okay, please right along. We've got the uh, item number seven here the first street overlay and gap closure. Um, and just very briefly, our contract has been executed. Uh, Coastland is the engineer of record for, for that work. Uh, they are starting with their surveying and utility location efforts. So that's getting kicked off. I don't, I'm not, I don't have an update on Crocker Bridge. In my, list, my last communication with our uh, Center County Public Works Director, uh, public, our public infrastructure 
Um, this, this you know, project's pretty close to being wrapped up and completed. Uh, I've asked about the opportunity to coordinate on a ribbon cutting ceremony. Uh, if you'd like to do that, and so it's just we're going to coordinate dates and times for doing an official ribbon cutting uh, ceremony to acknowledge uh, what, what's been a long time coming. And I've, significant seen, of and I've seen one flyer already out there for one of our new mm -hmm. candidates that's uh, he's planning on having you run across that thing. So I know we we'll make sure it's open. Thank you for the dates on that before we see, before we see that going. Right. Then, so. Okay. Question. Questions like that? Was, was there a city council question who was kind of uh, spearheading the immediate necessity many years ago? There was. Uh, it was a uh, longtime council member, uh, uh, Marianne Brigham. I agree. Should we recognize her for that? Uh, I, I think it, when we did the kind of the groundbreaking, she was invited, and we would definitely want to invite uh, our past council members who were part of the, part of the effort to get this project. Thank you. Right. And I spoke with your honor this last weekend. And with the area between the, the finished walkway bridge and where it marries up to the actual sidewalk, there's an issue there where there's a gas meter and there's power pole that's in the way. And it looks like it's going right towards that. But how they're going to change it. I had Johannes go over and take a look at it, and I think he's going to pull his hair out when he sees the problem. He's going to do what? He's going to pull his hair out. Because <laughs> there's a definite issue with that section. Can we go around it, Bob? Or we, we, we can, yeah, you, you can definitely design that around it, but that means reconstructing the, the uh, walkway and the uh, not the walkway, but the uh, uh, rail and the wall that abuts the side next to the bridge. It's all, it's poorly designed or poorly, uh, I think they read the foot trench wrong. Just doesn't make sense. Anybody want to go look at it? You're going to look at it. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So no real update on that. We don't have the, the, the time when we get into a ribbon cutting or anything on that. No, I don't know. Uh, I heard. He, yeah. he just got back from vac okay. vacation. Um, uh, I'll follow up. Okay. Uh, I'll ask him about uh, uh, Bob's comment. I know there, there, there's always been that gas meter there, right? Right. Yeah. 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 But also, it, as I said, that side of the walkway. I think the marriage of the walk, walkway to the sidewalk uh, on the bridge side comes there and it just takes kind of a, a dive, like the walkway is going to go underneath the driveway. <laughs> You're talking on the east side or the west side? On the west side. The west side. Yeah. yeah. The gas meter looks like it was an old house years and years ago. Yeah, it might serve our water treatment plant. Water treatment, sure. And they, yeah. Well, are city engineers, could they propose a solution to that? Oh, we'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah, it's a county project. They they yeah. they came and asked the city for some input. You know, where do you want to, where would you like to see things? But for the most part, it's a county, county project. Which one? All right. Update, Clark County Rehab. So that's another quick one. They are uh, rounding the bend, and we expect to get a 90% submittal on that next week. Conservation project number 10. Is that is that the first street slurry? I'm not sure. Yeah, so we said, I mean, uh, yeah, we can put that in the that's first. We put that out for informal bid and got nothing back. Five, eight, or five contractors we sent it out to. So we repackaged it and sent it out again to a couple. Uh, it is to be noted that that's yeah, there's no budget for that project either. Mm -hmm. How do you rebrand? Uh, how do you rebrand? Uh, repackage it and send it back to the city? Oh, we'll just like maybe detail it a little bit different. Put some more pictures. Send it out to new contractors. Okay, and then uh, number eleven, the W Trans pedestrian safety evaluations. Uh, so this is related to the school. School Street and North Street intersections with the boulevard. 
Um, and the, so that's another one that's getting kicked off. The contract with W Trans has been executed um, and they are mobilizing their traffic counters. So um, during school time, they're gonna have people out there noticing vehicle movements, counting traffic, and, and just starting the process to evaluate safety improvements at that intersection. Those that that goes along with the school superintendent when he was down here asking for that. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Correct. Where are we at? I lost count here. Um, we're reaching a 12, 13? No, 12. Update. Uh, yeah, yeah. The drought relief. That's the one we, we started out with. Oh, you're right. We covered that. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot about that. Okay, 13. Update. Fresh part of the water forum, Potter Valley. Yeah, so uh, council had received an update on the status of what's now being referred to as the Eel Russian Project Authority, where uh, it involves the, the removal of uh, the Cape Horn Dam and uh, in place of that, uh, putting a, a, a pumping structure that would enable the transfer of water during high flows. That, that's what was identified as the, the preferred alternative. Uh, since the decision was made about designate that as the preferred alternative, we've, we haven't heard any, any further updates at this point. So it's kind of a wait and see how that is. I think that that, ever, that one's going on forever. And now you said so long term. All right, six acres of water. Uh, staff continues to participate in monthly meetings with uh, the, the six acres uh, team that is comprised of a set of state representatives as well as the uh, state appointed uh, engineer is GHD. Uh, they have asked us. They, they, they. Uh, we su we submitted on um, our uh, staff time for reimbursement. They've acknowledged that. Uh, they are now looking at uh, uh, incorporating our cost estimates for uh, future work uh, into a comprehensive uh, funding request that they're going to put into a, a work order uh, that uh, they're going to put bring before the state board. Uh, I think the intent is to, uh, I, I believe, uh, uh, get a commitment for the fund, funding for the costs that we've incurred to date and, and participating in these in these meetings and this planning process, as well as establishing a budget going forward for our time to get this this project um, uh, finalized and completed. I don't know. That's, that's fair. That's, that's it in a nutshell. So what's going to be our uh, role in this going forward? As minimal as possible. Okay. <laughs> that's that's what we're positioned for. Answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they can do it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. They they've been um, especially with respect to South Cloverdale Water Company. They they've been really looking at other options to have. Uh, uh, other organizations serve as the lead agency with respect to the grant application to the state for particularly for the, the wastewater component. Right. Uh, you know, looking at Sonoma Water, uh, looking at the county, and and and, and uh, there was some interest in in bringing it back to council to have uh, council weigh in on that, but uh, that that really hasn't bubbled up yet. Water recycling planning study for recycled water. Yeah, so the, the you know council uh, authorized staff to <laughs> apply for uh, two sets of funding, one from the Bureau of Reclamation as well as the State Water Board. We have uh, completed the agreement with the Bureau of Reclamation for a little over five hundred thousand dollars of funding towards a, about a one million dollar uh, effort. Uh, we're still waiting on the State Board to uh, complete the funding agreement on that side uh, so that we, we have a kind of full picture of how the state funding is going to coordinate with the, the federal funding. And it, it's a little unusual because they, they work on different timelines in mm -hmm. uh, the, federal, the federal budget process, the state budget process. So we're trying to work on getting that all aligned so that we can have a, a definitive timeline for the project. Uh, West Coast is under contract to lead up that uh, the re recycled water study. So we've been we've been coordinating with uh, Vanessa's team that is uh, you know specializes in the recycled water feasibility studies. So I don't know, Vanessa, if you had any anything else you want to add to that. 
No, I think you you've summarized it nicely. Is there a time limit on on that first grant? Uh, there is a timeline. I think it's I think it's three years. So, so the other piece will come as well before it's up. Right. Yeah, that, I mean we, we, you know, unfortunately when we when we first kickstarted the project, we envisioned it being split 50 50 between state and federal funding. Uh, you know, with the the state deficit, the the state cut back funding, and so we'll be looking at making up that difference with. With uh, you know, water enterprise funds, and, and that's kind of what we're trying to get the agreement with the state finalized, so we know exactly what that commitment looks like, and and have all those timelines run concurrently. Since that, that was always the vision up front was to have uh, both the Fed and the state funding process all work together. Uh, Department head update. Uh, um, we just finished a, a leak study. We hired a, a company to come in and do a leak study on the boulevard from, I think it was Treadway, 400 feet south of Treadway, all the way to First Street, the boulevard, all the way into the, the through the whole public right way up to the, uh, all, all the meters, identify um, any leaks we have in that area um, so they can get fixed prior to any scratching or slurry going on in the future. And mitigate our water usage uh, heavily mitigated. So. And, and Derek, is it, um, it's I understand there is determined that there's a leak in the driveway entrance to yeah. Chevron on the boulevard. Uh, what, what's challenging for us is that South Cloverdale Water Company also has lines in the area. So it's uh, it's one of the ones that's hard to tell if it's our leak or their leak. Uh, and it's going to require ultimately to repair that uh, a shutdown of that driveway. So there's going to be, yeah. uh, you know, some significant coordination with with Chevron, uh, and that's a very important driveway. It's it's, it's part of this the signal intersection. Um, so that that's something that was identified. I think as part of the leak study. Yeah, yeah, okay. identifying where that's coming from and kind of giving us a idea of you know, the timeline of like how we're going to. Can you, can you do it in December? No. It's, it's never going to go. Holy, that's not about it. Another time. Oh, okay. And then uh, airport. Uh, like we said, the RFQ is going to go out hopefully this week for the uh, happy lights for all Asian requests. And then, uh, as far as that, we did a uh, inspection of the airfield. Caltrans. Uh, it went pretty good. We do have a, a, a lot of vegetation management here. Gone over the supplemental and then G future agenda items. Anyone? Only one I have. And I think it'd be good to, since we still, you said we still have the contract, that survey. I'd like to see a survey go out and see what people want in the plaza, similar to what we did with uh, Berber. You know, because, and I want to commend Hector and his guys too. You look out there right now that where they cut those bushes out of there, you know, the plaza looks outstanding right now. It's only, yep. it's getting better and better. And I think if we do a, a quick little um, survey on that, if we can get that in there, probably get some really good information. And those, uh, sometimes those plaza projects are doable budget wise, you know what I mean? And uh, if we can get together and make that place just to bang up the plaza in there, I think that'd be a good thing. Thank you, Chair. I have a few listed just from this meeting. Um, City-owned property on the east side of Russian River would be a new item, potentially a bus stop relocation on Jefferson. Uh, the sign request form review, once we create that. Move 101 North update to standing items. Um, that Live Oak Drive item for Mr. San Angelo uh, and community survey for Plaza Park. If there's any others. That's it. That sounds good, Mike. All right. Anything else on that? Anybody got anything else? Or, yes, I sir. A question. Yes. Only because I'm unclear with regarding my stop sign proposal. Um, what um, is is it at? Is it, has it been referred from this subcommittee to go to the um, the Food council for further decision, or what? What's the? Yes. What? What's uh, yes, it has. Okay. Do you know, does anybody here know, would that be on like 
Come on, night. No, gender will not have the finance to be on future gender if that's back. Okay. Either uh, October 9th or October yeah. 23rd. Yeah, just yeah. 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 Keep, keep, it, keep your eye out for the agenda. But as far as it, it has passed, it needs to muster here. Right. So it's, it's moving up to the It's moving up, yes. to, moving up the Just the same. Because okay. You end up giving direction to put the striping and the red curving. Yes, direction or striping red curving, which help. Might, might help with when they put if they do put the red striping down there maybe help some of those cars to not be parking in the red zone maybe move them bring around you know a little more views and vegetation management kind of everything the whole package that you talked about and some of all of it's going to have to be done to make that work cool but yes your son is good so you got it all yeah, no, it's, 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 I should just be sure checking it out. There you go. Check it out. But it is. Cool. All right. We got 329. Thank you for all showing up. We're going to go to H and adjournment. See you later. Okay. <laughs>